the fists are back. Lord General Ulverin looked at Major Dace, who had spoken those words. With his thin face, ice blue eyes and aquiline nose, the Lord General was a natural when it came to bestowing withering looks on those among his staff that disappointed him. He gave one of those glances to Dace now. The Major looked away, suitably chastised. The gunship sat idle, as it had for several minutes now, its landing stanchions and velocity thrusters still hissing with occasional jets of steam as they released flight pressure and settled into repose. Across the side of this midnight blue vulture of a vessel, an engraved symbol stared back at the horde of guardsmen that waited. A clenched fist, as red and dark as good wine. The gunship's forward ramp lowered like a mouth opening. Ulviron was put in mind, as he always was when seeing an Astartes Thunderhawk, of a great steel bird of prey. When its forward ramp lowered, just beneath the cockpit window, the bird seemed to roar with the sound of whining hydraulics. I count four, Major Dace said, making this his second most obvious observation that day. Four armored forms, each more than a head taller than a normal man, tramped down the clanking ramp. Just four, the Major added a moment later. Ulviran would gladly have shot him, had he been able to think of a reason to do so. Not even a good reason, just a legal one. Dace was an asset on the battlefield, but at staff meetings his dullard observations were a tedium his fellow officers could easily do without. The Astartes made no move to approach the crowd of guardsmen. They stood as still as statues, monstrous bolters held to their eagle-emblazoned chests. Olviran took stock of the situation. The Astartes were back, and it was not the time to stand around gawping. Control. The scene warranted control. Maybe there could be some dignity salvaged from this whole tawdry development. Having the Astartes arrive would be a cause for celebration right enough. But Ulviran recalled every single word in the missive he'd composed to Chapter Master Cantor of the Crimson Fists. Begging was the only word for it, really. He'd begged for aid. And here it was. Deliverance once more. He was not a man who enjoyed resorting to begging. It had galled him even as he'd dictated the distress call. Ulviran strode forward to meet the giants as they stood stone still in the shadow of their avian gunship. He noted with unnoticeable displeasure that the heavy bolter turrets on the Thunderhawk's wingtips panned across the camp, as if seeking threats even amongst Imperial forces. Did the Fists not even consider the Guard capable of holding their own base camp secure against the enemy? In that moment, deliverance or not, the Lord General hated their damned arrogance. Welcome back, he said to the first of the Astartes, who was undoubtedly the commander of this small team. The warrior looked at the Lord General, his snarling, visored helm turning down to regard the human. This close, no more than an arm's length from the towering warriors, Ulverin felt his gums ache from the pressuring hum of the squad's power armor. The whine of energy was more tactile than audible, making his eyes water and prickling the skin on the back of his neck. He swallowed as the Astartes made the sign of the Aquila. The warrior's gauntlet hands forming the salute and banging against his armored chest. Even the smallest of movements made their armor joints purr in a low mechanical snarl. Ulviran returned the salute. His neck hurt a little, looking up like this, and he unwillingly flinched when the Astartes spoke. With all due respect, the voice was a crackling, vox-distorted growl far deeper than a normal man's. Why are you addressing me? Ulviran hadn't expected this level of disrespect, nor this degree of informality. He was a Lord General, after all. Planets lived and died by his tactical expertise. The General took in the details of the warrior's armor. The suit was the blue of a starless midnight sky, trimmed in places with a bold red, nowhere more noticeable than the clenched fist on the warrior's shoulder pad. A scroll detailing oaths and matters of unknowable honor was draped from the warrior's other shoulder pad, moving slightly in the gentle wind. 
hanging from a thick chain that had been made into a bandolier, oversized, misshapen skulls knocked quietly together as the Astartes moved. From the pronounced lower jaws and brutish bone structure, Ulviron knew they were the skulls of orcs. In life, they'd been big orcs, most likely leaders among their bestial kind. In death, they were impressive trophies. This Astartes was clearly the leader of the squad. None of the others wore trophies to match. I am addressing you because I assumed you were in command. He adopted the tone of one speaking to a small child, which his men would have found both laughable and insane had they heard. The thrill of authority over these giants rushed through the Lord General's blood. He would, after all, brook no disrespect. Do I look like a brother captain to you? The Astartes asked, and Ulverun wondered if the warriors' Vox speakers made his voice into a growl, or if it was naturally that low. Ulverun nodded in response to the question. He was determined not to be intimidated. To my eyes, yes, you do. Well, I'm not. Here the Astartes looked to his fellows. Not yet, anyway. Ulviran heard something at the edge of his hearing, a series of quiet clicks coming from the helms of the armored men. He assumed, quite correctly, that they were laughing with each other over a private Vox channel. The Astartes, draped in skulls, chains and scrolls detailing his many victories, inclined his head at one of the others. He's the sergeant. Ulverin turned to face this next one, making the sign of the Aquila once more. Before the Lord General could speak, this next Astartes, who was clad in a blood-colored toga draped around his armor, shook his helmed head. No, Lord General, the Astartes intoned, his voice as much a mechanical rumble as the first ones had been. You do not address me either. Ulverin's patience was reaching its end. Then who am I to address? The robed warrior nodded in the direction of the Thunderhawk at the newest arrival striding down the ramp. This Astartes was clad in plate of charcoal black, and even without much knowledge of Astartes' technology, it was clear to Ulviron that the dark suit of power armor was an antique, dating back centuries, probably even millennia. The black warrior's helmed face was a grinning skull, the red eye lenses lending it a demonic cast as he looked left and right, surveying the landing site. Ulviron swallowed, unaware of how his Adam's apple bobbed and betrayed his nervousness. Throne, he thought. A chaplain. The Astartes in the red toga offered the Lord General a slight bow. You address him 